Welcome back to Homestead, everybody. I'm your buddy, Levy the Yokel. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking, I'm assuming. <laughs> hey, look what's going on behind me here. It's, it's, it's automation, sort of. Just a teeny bit. I got tired of standing here pouring my ingots. I went down and did a bit of mining, uh, and I got a bunch of uh, ores and whatnot, and so I came back here, and so I made myself just a teeny little clock. It's kind of a cheat. It's not super duper automated. Um, it Once you start it, it just goes until it's done or until you break one of these torches. Uh, and it won't start up automatically until you place one of those torches, but, you know, it's fine. It works. I probably don't want to leave it running all the time. Um, well, it'll, it'll stop when it's empty, so that, that's not a big deal. It's not like a clock that'll just run continuously, but... Uh, you know, if I put some other ores in there, I might want to, you know, cast some blocks or something like that. So, uh, this will work for now. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's real simple. So, it's just got, I've got a comparator. You can do this um, in any mod pack that has tinkers. Uh, I don't know why I said that. That should be self-evident. But anyway, so uh, the hopper here just, uh, it sends a signal whenever something's in it. Uh, for that split second, and then that uh, fires off the comparator, which sends the little pulse over here, which pulses the, uh, what do we call that thing? Yeah, that thing. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> I want to say faucet, but it's not faucet. It's not a drain. It's the thing you put on there. Okay, all right, I'm going to look it up. Wow, how embarrassing. I've never played this before. <laughs> oh, gosh. Both of you that are watching this are just saying, it's the such and such, Yokel, it's the such and such. Yeah, it's the faucet. Wow, I was right. <laughs> this goes to show, kids, sometimes you should trust your instincts, especially when they are well-informed instincts. And I've been monkeying around with this silly mod for, uh, you know, tinkers, that is, for quite some time. So I would say my, uh, my intuition, my instincts are well-informed. Um, one of the reasons that I, uh, was doing this was because, um, I used up all the iron, more or less all the iron I had making steel over there. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and, um, I, I needed some iron for some stuff. One of the things I want to do is I want to upgrade this tool station so that, um, I can upgrade some of my tools. I already upgraded my sword. I put a steel blade on it, and because my other blade was, I think it was flint? Uh, yeah, because my other blade was flint, I was actually able to upgrade it on the wooden tool station, which was nice, but now that it has a steel blade, I can't upgrade it anymore, and I want to, um, actually, I'm going to upgrade my axe, I believe, is what I have over here. Oh, no, no, this is for my sword, yeah. Uh, ba binding. You know what? That is not right, actually. <gasps> ah, I did. I made the wrong thing. I've done it. That is not supposed to be that. All right. So here's an example of where we might not want this thing to uh, keep running all the time. So I'm going to turn that off. Oops. I'm going to collect my torch, though. So those things are more precious than gold right now. I, uh, oh, hello. I did actually uh, procure a fair amount of redstone while I was out collecting ores and uh, got a lot of uh, gold here. Finally found a lot of gold. Uh, I was not in a river biome though. Um, let's see, we want to make, um, we want to make, uh, what is it? It's the, uh, hang on a second here, I just, oh, it's in my hand. <laughs> All right, you know what, let's stay focused here for just one second. Sometimes that is easier said than done. I imagine I'm not alone in that department. So what we're going to need is we're going to need three more iron blocks. And we need four in total. And then I think that that is that it. Oh, no, we're going to need some seared bricks, too. And I think, hopefully, oh, no... One shy there, just one shy. Doggone it, I just, I thought I had all my ducks in a row. I thought they were just going to flow smoothly right into this. Wouldn't you know it, I don't. Okay, let's see here. Rustic, 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 rustic. All right, let's just make some real quick. This will give us access to um, more things that we can make, like these big guys over here, uh, as well as being able to upgrade our... Um, 
being able to upgrade our metal tools. Okay, uh, let's see. Is our Electrum... It is. I need to make a mold. Um, and I guess, you know, let's just go ahead and make it out of iron. Why not? Iron. Gold. Wow! <laughs> on a roll today. I have had my coffee, so I'm not sure what my excuse is. Oh, well. Please don't hold it against me. All right, are you done? You're done. Let's put the gold on the bottom. You guys, if you're not familiar with that, you just click on whichever ore you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. Click on whatever ore you want, and it sends it to the bottom, and that'll be the next thing out of your faucet. 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 The next thing out of your faucet. Uh, and um, there you go. I did not know that for the longest time. This will make our sword. This is actually cool. Um, so I put the steel blade on here, and uh, that obviously gave us a, a much higher attack. We were at four, four and a half, I think. Now we're at eight, and it gave us a bit of durability. But watch this. This should give us, yeah, extra durability. So that brings us up to 800. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. So let's do that. And then the other cool thing about this is while I run around, I build up a charge with that Electrum. You see the you see the hilt there? It's kind of changing colors. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's go find uh, let's go find some half of this victim. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Cow. Are you up here? I'm going to come slaughter you. Oh, let's let's not let's not jump. Let's just hit him. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Since we're over here, let's take a look at a couple of things. First things first. I fixed the roof. It looks way better now. It doesn't look like it's about to fall over. I was thinking about, like, why did it not come out the way I had originally envisioned it? And I finally realized it's because the way I originally envisioned it, this top floor was a lot smaller. Uh, I ended up making it pretty much the same size as the bottom floor, uh, at least as far as this uh, profile goes. And uh, once we go back over there, I'll, uh, I'll show you why. Um, so uh, here, I, I went ahead and I made this immersive engineering uh, tank, this big tank here, uh, because this thing was filled up with creosote. And once it filled with creosote, yeah, see, it won't work anymore. So, um, and I'm not pumping it over there automatically right now. I don't quite have that much, uh, that many materials. Uh, eventually, though, we'll get this stuff pumping directly in there. Uh, just for right now, I've just been using buckets to haul it over. And I'm not going to worry about that right now. So, uh, But anyway, that's where our creosote is going. And I think that looks so cool. Here, uh, you might have noticed, I'm sure some of you did already, that this is a lot cleaner over here. This was just getting really kind of overgrown with grass and flowers and, and whatnot. And uh, so uh, this is concrete right here. See concrete from Immersive Engineering. It's made with the slag that we're producing back there in our blast furnace. And it's, as far as I can tell so far, about the only useful thing to do with the slag. And it gives you, it gives you a teeny little speed boost, it says, while you're running across it. And it must be teeny, because I, I really can't tell. If you don't know, the reason why all of this grass and all these flowers are growing... Ooh, sorry about that. And uh, it's because of these these apiaries. These guys uh, encourage growth, and I think it's like a five block radius around them. It might be a four block radius. Uh, big enough to cover an entire field, a normal sized field, and, and then just a bit. Uh, and that includes growing uh, grass and flowers out here. All right, so what I want to do next is I want to protect our investment up here from creeper explosions. I've mentioned the daytime creepers. I uh, actually went down into the cave down below our house down here where they were coming from and I put some proper torches down there. I put some of these totem torches down there. I think. Yeah, no, yeah, I did that. <laughs> did I do that or was I thinking of doing it? Yeah, no, I did it. I put some totem torches down there. So hopefully that will reduce the amount of uh, creepers and, and zombies and skeletons that we have coming up to visit us. But there's always a chance that it will happen. So... What we want to do is we want to look at the totem mod. There is, oh, here, let's actually in our quest guide. Let's just look at that real quick. It is in, let's see, it's not Stone Age, I don't think. No, is it uh, Home Life? No, Farm Life. Yeah, there we go, Farm Life. Totemic Magic. 
Uh, we will make this Totempedia, <laughs> which is kind of fun to say, Totempedia, and it'll uh, tell us all about the mod, hopefully. Uh, we are going to need this Totem Whittling Knife. Uh, so I don't think I made that yet. Let me just check my bag. <laughs> Lots of knives and such. No, okay, so let's make that. Let's let's look in to see what that requires. Um, where is the knife? There's the knife. One, two, three. One, two, three. That will get us two flints, and that will get us the sharpening stone, and the iron ingot, and the blade, and that part, and the strap, and there we go. Now we have a whittling knife. Hurrah! And uh, thank you, Totemic Magic Quest. Let's also make the guide. All right, so I'm not going to sit here and read all this stuff to you guys. I'll just kind of cover it as we uh, as we go along. So, but first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some totem poles using this whittling knife. And uh, the uh, let's see, where's the meat here? We use the knife to carve it. Uh, we can carve different types of totems into it. Although I don't think they look different. I'm kind of hoping that changes in the future. Uh, we, need, we can make a base. Each totem pole needs one totem base at the bottom and can be up to six meters high. Okay, so we have to put the base on there. Let's remember that. And the give a beneficial effect. Um, a totem pole can have different carbons and different heights. Yeah, we know that. Oh, that's a different, slightly different recipe there. That must be uh, the default recipe. Um, it doesn't say... Okay, it just says it gives you beneficial effects to nearby players. So we're going to have to test that out. I, I've tested it a little bit in the past. I think it is a radius of five blocks. That is a, apparently a magic number, five blocks. Um, so what I'm getting at here, though, the reason I'm doing this is one of the totems that you can carve uh, prevents creepers from exploding. And that sounds like a really, really good thing. So if... Let's see, we have a creeper explode over here. One, two, three, four, five. Well, he's not going to be in there. He's going to be out here. So uh, we'll, we'll count this. One, two, three, four, five. So if we put the totem like right here-ish, that will protect kind of this area right in here. And then we can put another one maybe over here and kind of protect this area. I guess really probably the thing to do is to protect our storage spots. So let's let's make sure we have that covered. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. So if we put it here-ish, it would be really awkward. <laughs> let's put it, let's put one right here. Let's do that. Okay, so we put down our log and then we carve it. You notice there when I uh, carved it, it said totem base. Let's just uh, let's see, right click, shift right click. There we go. Okay, bat. Uh, the bat, I believe, lets you um, fall. I think blaze. You know, these are all in the in the guide, so we'll just we'll just look at them there. One I want is ocelot. There we go. Ocelot, and you know what? We can actually do a couple more so let's do the horse one i believe that makes us faster and all right ocelots and uh, big rabbit spider spider lets us climb walls rabbit lets us jump squid i think gives us um water breathing uh but let's see oh you know i don't actually know what some of these do i believe they've added some since the last time i used this so let's just take a look real quick if we can uh, totem effect. Okay, bat negates fall damage. Blaze gives you fire resistance. Buffalo makes you mine faster. Cow gives you resistance to damage, but it slows you down. Enderman gives you night vision. Oh, that's kind of cool. Horse gives you a speed boost. That's the one we want. Ocelot prevents creepers from exploding. Pigs bring you good luck. Okay. Rabbit gives you a jump boost. Spider lets you climb walls. Squid gives you water breathing. And wolf gives you strength. So, lots of cool stuff there. That's the one we want. All right, so let's see here. Speed. Yeah, this will help. Resistance. Where do I get resistance? I'm asking questions like that. And let's see. Speed. And it's gone. Okay. How close do we need to get? That's one, two, three, four, five. So if I go here, do I get it? Nope. Here. 
here. Okay, right here. So we're protected right up to here, which is not bad. And look at that. We have talked through an entire day again. How on earth do I do that? All right, we've slept away the day, and I want to test one more thing here. I want to see if it's round, the area of coverage, or if it's square. So, one, two, three, four, five. I should be covered right here, so let's see. Yeah, okay, and if I step out right here, and it's gone. Okay, so it is a square, so it's five to the corner. Okay, that's good. So I noticed, <clears throat> I placed that one over there, this container right here is actually not protected, and I want to make sure that's protected. So let's put it over here. One, 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 one. Let's start here. One, two, three, four, five. Um... Is that awkward? No, that's fine. All right, totem base. Totem base. All right, there. I've got uh, all the uh, totems out. I will probably put a few more out, but this one's got us covered. We've got the uh, smeltery protected on both sides here. Um, I don't know about this one. I might move that one. It's kind of weird. We've got the uh, farm protected. I put it right there so it would cover this area right here. Uh, I might move all of this over one and, and move this again too, but for right now it's protected. I've got the uh, this part protected, and uh, this one right here in the corner should protect the uh, the storage room in here uh, well enough at least. I don't really, I'm not too worried about a creeper coming in here and blowing stuff up, but um, you know, better safe than sorry. Putting it away, putting it away, doodle doo. Okay, dokie, what's in here? Just iron out. Uh, okay, we'll let that finish off. Okay, I was going to show you guys why I ended up making the top as big as the bottom. And it has everything to do with how this mod pack has logs uh, implemented. I'm not sure exactly which mod in the mod pack makes these logs round, uh, but it does. And, um, let's see, let's grab a couple. I think a visual example will help us better than uh, me just talking about it. So what happens is you get your logs, right? You're going to make your wall. And, and that looks great. That looks great. They touch each other, closing off any holes. But then you come and you do the corner, and there we've got a problem. Right? I don't actually know. Is it, is it a real gap? Yeah, so it's, it's purely visual. It's, it's not an actual gap. Uh, so you would be protected in here, and I suspect that probably also means that mobs wouldn't be able to see you through there. Uh, so functionally, structurally, technically, it is a uh, solid wall. Uh, but if you're uh, uh, a, a bit of a stickler for details like me, it's really going to bug you. So we could do this. Whoa. <laughs> thought Thanos had me there for a second. All right, so we can do this. It makes a little roundy outside wall, which is not bad. It's not bad. It's what we got going uh, right over here, I think. Anyway, um, well, yeah, right here on the corner, I suppose. That corner. There we go. Yeah. So the last corner I look at. Yeah, it's what we got going on right here, which is not so bad. But uh, if you want to try to make like kind of a roundy shape, it's a little bit more tricky. Uh, but you say you have to go into the inside. And do it like that and then it closes it up and you get your little curve out here but hey thank you <laughs> but but it takes up some space inside and so anyway but that's why uh this house is built the way it is talked a lot about what i did i haven't really done anything yet though oh geez all right i am going to uh, go inside here wait out this rain and i will be back just as soon as the weather clears up and we will continue and that should let us make a saddle. There we go. And that should... Yes. Excellent. What do we need? We need 17 bricks to make the kiln. And uh, that is probably not a bad thing to do. So let's do that. So what is 17 times 4? I think I might be out of clay, finally. I need to collect some rocks so I can make some more strainers, so we can collect some more clay. Uh, or I need to go find some clay, but I'm just going to go for rocks right now. 
and let that water strainer do the work for us while we do something else. Or while we do nothing at all. Choice is ours. So pretty over here. So rock free. Ah, here we go. Looks like it's starting to get a little dark out here. Oh, what is this? <gasps> Find something I hadn't found yet. Oh, look at this. All right, well, let's... This is probably a great opportunity for us to stop and throw out our yurt. Hopefully. Yep, all right. There, put that away. Okay. Hey, you know, I never did tell you guys about my shiny sparkly protection three breastplate that I have. I started to, and then as per usual, I got sidetracked, went off on a tangent, as I'm prone to do. Uh, but what happened was I was down underneath the base, uh, spelunking through the cave. If you recall way back, I think it was episode number three, maybe four, uh, I went down into a cave, had my first encounter with some skeletons, uh, I was looking for the uh, bauxite, and I got scared and I left. I went back into that cave. And when I got down to the bottom, I, I heard the zombies, and they started coming at me, and there was like a named one. His name was, um, I didn't, I wasn't recording, sorry, so I, I didn't get any of this for you guys, but his name was like Dr. Zomboss, or something like that. And he was just a normal zombie, he had this chest plate on, and a couple other things. Um, and then he had five or six other zombies with him, and so I fought them off quite successfully. I cheesed it with my grappling hook. I... <laughs> I, I pulled myself up into the top of that uh, that shaft that I had gone down in and basically swung back and forth, hitting them with the sword and shooting arrows into their heads until they were all dead, which was good because, as we learned recently, zombies don't knock back when you hit them. So if you got five of them coming at you, you need to get some space between you and them because you, you can't knock them back with the sword. And so to continue my story about the zombies, when I killed him, he dropped this chest plate, and now I have it. The end. It's a Holstein. We have Herefords and Frisians, but we don't have Holsteins, do we? Let's see if we can get you out of there. You look like you might be stuck. Are you stuck? You are. All right, can we get you out of there without aggravating you? Ah, he's free. All right. Freedom! Look at this. This is cool. I get, I'm a little baffled. Have I? I just—I must not have come over to this side of the hill at all. Because, oh, you're not free. I don't. Run, you are free. You're confusing me. Come on, man, this way. <laughs> Look how tight that is. Ugh. Oh my gosh! Why are you not coming with me? That is just so aggravating. Dude. Dude. Woo! Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> What? What in the world, man? Why are you guys just... It's like Calvana over here. Whoa! Oh, man. I'm going to accidentally kill him if I'm not careful. Now, where were you guys when I was look? Where are you going? You are just... Okay, you know what? Let's try this. Let's try it this way. Maybe he doesn't know he's on a leash. Here, will you come with me now? If I lead you now, will you follow me wherever I take your butt? Yes, you will. Okay. Well, there we go, guys. If you have that problem, just try releasing them. Come on, Mr. Holstein. You're safe up here from creepers. All right. So I'm going to make some strainers and uh, collect some clay. And then uh, once I got enough, I will make the bricks for the kiln and we will be back. All right, guys. Well, unfortunately, I'm afraid that is all the time I have for today. I was really hoping that we could build the kiln today, but it's going to take a while to strain out that clay, and I just don't have time today. It's uh, towards uh, getting really close to uh, the couple of special events here in the real world that I am actively participating in, and I have a lot of stuff I need to do to get ready for those things, and I'm running out of time. So as much as I would love to just sit and play and record all day long, 
I don't have time this week. In the meantime, you guys have a great day, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye!